So that nasty, gnarly, son of a gun call reluctance. Ugh. Man, it's a beast. Yeah. It is a beast. It's crazy. It, it it is it is crazy how we can kind of put a fear in our in our head before we've even tried it of just the fear of no. So it's a funny thing, and I I think I think everybody's affected to, uh, affected by it at some level. I know for sure I am. Right? I am. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what it is is like I'll I'll play all these potential conversations in my head, right? Well, what if uh, you know I say you're the you're a real estate agent, you know, you're the listing agent, which and you want to hear from me because you want what's going on with the deal that we're doing, but yet I still like what if she asks me this and what if she says that and what if she doesn't like me and then she won't want to send in business here or what if I say something wrong or what if she asked me something I don't know the answer to and then she's going to say that and I'm going to say this and then she'd say that and I and I play all these silly little conversations in my head and the calls never go that way like right like ever right. it's like it's almost like what if we changed that and said what if she appreciates me calling and giving these updates and she oh no oh no 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 see see it's always going to be it's always going to be She's going to hang up on me or he's going to right. tell me to go pound sand or uh, he's going to say, don't you know who I am and why are you calling? And then I, I think in my head, well, then they're going to call everybody I know and somehow make fun of me. It's like such silly, nonsensical. Yes. I mean, it just it makes no. Where do you think it comes from? Uh, I th for me, I, I and I can only speak for me, but I think it's the fear of um, no, it is you know, I don't want to be rejected today. I, I don't want it not even one time. Um, but for me, I, I kind of look at it now of, I know my value. I know what I have to offer. And I still at times struggle with call reluctance. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, and you did, you did an activity, um, recently, it was powerful um, where let's say I, I'm just making up numbers because I think it was more, but there's a hundred people in the room and you told everyone, um, it, well, you said told like 87 people stand up and you say no. And then 13 people, you say yes. And then you dwindled that number down. So there continued to be more no's and less um, yes. And more no's and less yeses. And so it, it was powerful because it brought me to the power of one. Mm. It starts with the power of one. And because yeah, we can we can have one. we can have like we have the best career ever. I really believe that. I so like if you look at a loan officer, if they when not if when they get one real estate agent referring to them, a good qualified real estate agent. I mean, it's not uncommon to have a closing per month. Like you get a, a, a great agent and we, it's awesome that we can go look at their production reports these days using this service like Redder and MMI, List Reports, Loan Officer, CRM.AI, all these wonderful services where you can look up their production. And so I can look, well, this, this agent's averaging three buyer sides per month, right? Uh, I mean, there's plenty of them out there that are doing that. And so as long as I'm going after them, you know, they have all kinds of business, you know, to do. If I just got a third of them, that'd be one a month. And let's say I hypothetically make $3,000 per closing and they're referring me one a month. That means that one agent's worth $36,000 uh, for me for the year. If I just get four of those for the entire year, that'd be a hundred, like over 120 grand. And huge. so I can have a hundred of them tell me to pound sand, which they never do, but just if, and only four of them go, Hey, you know what? I think we're going to get along just fine. Yeah. And that's, that's $120,000 a year. It will. And that's, that's amazing. And you get to determine your income in, in what we're doing. Isn't you, it wonderful? It, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I love this industry so much. And yeah, I, you want to, you want to raise, go, go get one new referral partner. You just got a $36,000 raise. Right. And, easy, and you know how, you know how hard most people would have to work. And this is going out to loan officers. So I'm not trying to be uncool or anything, but yeah, you tell a school teacher, a wonderful career, 
go tell them, hey, go ask for a $36,000 raise. And it's like, and I think they're worth five times what they're paid, right? I'm not saying that they're not, but there is zero chance they would get a $36,000 raise. And all we got to do is go get one new referral partner. But it's, but it's Kristen, crazy to think of. It, it is. But Kristen, you don't understand. Uh, they don't want to talk to me. They're going to hang up. They're already working with somebody. Um, I have to bring something of value. And all this crap conversation goes in my head, which frankly are exacerbated by ads that I see. Don't beg for business. Stop chasing reels or all that uh, absolute just crap that people send out that's trying to sell you something. You know, it's like selling ice to Eskimos. I don't want to be the person that can sell ice to Eskimos because they don't freaking need it. Right. right. So uh, anyway, so you, know, you know what? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say to you, what would you say to someone if they said, I don't want to sound salesy. I don't want to call and beg for business. So so I'd, I'd so if you were saying that, so I'd say, well, Craig, uh, uh, Craig, I'd say, Krista, what does begging for business look like to you? So Krista, what does begging for business look like? Tell me what that looks like to you. Um, to me, it looks like uh, somebody that once I say no, they don't, they continue to push me. So for instance, I, you know, I had someone recently who it, it was very aggressive um, and I don't respond well to that behavior, but mm -hmm. I I am relational. So anybody that knows me knows I love people and relationship. So had he had a different approach, the outcome would have been different. Um, but he never actually asked me for anything. It was just pushy. That's mm -hmm. all. That's all it felt like to me. Well, that's not. So that's not salesy. That's pushy. That's two different things. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be yeah. pushy. Now being salesy or, or so begging for business was the question. So I don't want to look like I'm begging for business. I've never seen anybody do that. I mean, for me, begging would be like, like, and this might be an uncool picture and I'm not trying to be uncool, but like, it'd be like somebody holding a gun to my head and they're, 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 they're going to take my wallet and I'm begging for my life. I'm pleading for my life. That's begging. Asking for business isn't begging. That's asking for business, right? That's like, uh, you pull up McDonald's. Would you like fries with that? That's not begging, trying to, Look, McDonald's doesn't need to beg anybody to buy fries, right? But yeah. it's in their script because they know that when they say, would you like fries with that? I think it's something like 37% go, uh, yeah, that sounds good. Or so, if they do the super size, you want yeah, to like super size that, that? <laughs> Yeah, I, they, you know, they actually had to stop doing that. Did they? Okay, they did. I didn't know. Like, if I, if I remember that. right, they actually had to stop doing that. Like that was, uh, it, they actually hey, had to stop doing it, that. I thought it was a great, it was a great marketing tool because yeah. I would love to see what their conversion rate on that was. Cause I'd be I like, bet, Oh yeah, why not? I bet it was, a, a I bet it was high. I bet it was yeah. high. I, I bet it was high, too. but they're not begging. They're just yeah. simply asking. So I think that that thing of begging for business, I, I I've always said, I don't think there is such a thing. Like, I don't think like there's literally no such thing as begging. I think where it all stems from is we think, People are meaner and bigger and badder than what they really are. That I think a lot of it comes from it's the boogeyman hiding under my bed. Let in my mind, there's a monster in the closet and there's no monster in the closet. It's in my mind that when you turn off the lights, you know, the, the bad guy under my bed is going to come out. There is no bad guy under the bed. So it's just this made up crap. Uh, that are ahead. So Kevin Gillespie, uh, which is the guru of crushing call reluctance, and I'm sure uh, he's going to be on here in the next couple of weeks. Um, uh, he says, uh, he told me that it all stems from the flight or fight uh, reaction, that our body that sees it as a threat and protection tells us to, uh, you know, to run from a threat. And what he talks about is recognizing it's not a threat, it's an opportunity, and there's a big difference between the two. One is a bear that's going to eat me. The other is a $36,000 paycheck that I just simply have to ask for. Right. And, uh, you know, Steve Jobs has his quote, uh, if you're not willing to ask for what you want, you're not going to go very far in life. And... Um, 
I think that's so true. So I think I think we have to understand that as a general rule, people aren't mean. Um, and they're not these big, bad ogres that we put them out to be. They're just people. And I think that's the first thing. And I think the other thing is knowing what you're going to say. I think that helps. Cause, cause let me ask you this, Krista. Hey, Krista, I've got a thousand dollars over here and I want you to give away a hundred. I want you to give away ten hundred dollar bills today. And here's a list of here's a list of people. Uh, and when you give away all thousand dollars, a hundred dollars at a time to this list of strangers, um, I'll give you a thousand dollars too. No catch. Right. My guess is you wouldn't have a hard time making that call because it's like the the best offer ever. ever. Free yeah. money. Right. Yeah. It's like, hey, I've got the winning numbers of a lottery. Uh, would you like those numbers? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I was looking to clear my calendar when you said that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. okay. This... Right. <laughs> and so, so I think, I think the first thing we have to do is understanding that we're offering a service that helps people that, uh, you know, we're in the business of loaning money and that we're looking for people that's buying a house and need to borrow money to get a house. And they're afraid. Right. Or we're looking for real estate agents that are in the business of closing deals and they need a lender or they're not getting a check. And oh, by the way, they want a lender that's going to follow up on their leads like green on a pickle. And the, and once they got a loan in process, going to keep them updated of what's going on so they can spend more, the realtor can spend more of their time out at the next listing lead or the next buyer lead rather than wondering if the appraisal was finally ordered or not. So, okay. So you brought up a good point there. So let me ask you this it, in the event that let's say somebody says, okay, call reluctance. It, it's not really, it's not really about making the call. It's bigger. Could it be that they don't really know their own value that they bring? hundred percent. I think, in fact, I got that. Um, I saw that. Uh, uh, I know you got these two lists. One is 141 reasons why the consumer should use my mortgage company. And, and not that all 141 apply to any one company, I suppose. But, you know, you, you, the idea is you look on this list and it gives you some ideas of like, oh, I never thought of that. I, of course, I bring that value. I just I never thought of that. And so it's a great little cheat sheet to have. And then the other one was uh, 101 reasons why real estate agents should refer uh, to you as a loan officer, well, like what you what you offer them. And again, not that any one person probably has all 101 things, but it's meant to right. get their creative juices going like, oh, well, I never thought about that. You know, it's like, it's like, um, I think a loan, a lot of loan officers make the mistake that the number one need of real estate agents is leads. And while that is true of the struggle bunnies, so the low, and I don't mean that as a slur, but like of the low producing agents, their number one problem is leads. Right. But of these qualified agents, these agents that have deals going on, they don't have a problem with leads because they have listings and listings create leads. They got leads. Their problem is, did you know the average real estate agent? Uh, let me rephrase that. The average qualified real estate agent. So the average great real estate agent only closes 5% of their leads. 5%, one out of 20. Wow. Did you know that? That, that's shocking, isn't it? That is shocking. Yeah. And so leads isn't their problem. Conversion. So when your value add is, hey, if the average agent's closing one out of 20, what if I helped you close, oh, I don't know, two out of 20? Doesn't sound like a big number. Still sounds very small, but it'd be a doubling of their business. I would say it's a big number when you think of the the math. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. is it is. And, and, and my gosh, if we can't help close another 5%, right? Of course you could, right? Just, But just by following up on their leads, like when they get a lead, they follow up and then you follow up also and you'll help them con convert another one. So so that's an easy value add. Let's say the agent closed 16 buy-in sell sites last year and you help them follow up on their leads and you help them close another 5%, which would not be hard to do. Right. Uh, you just help them with 16 closings for the year and let's say they make, I don't know, whatever, uh, their, their average paycheck, probably $9,000, somewhere 
uh, in that range. So 16 times 9,000 is what? 144, I think it is. So your value add is, hey, I'll help you make another $144,000. Well, that works. Yeah. But, that's but see, value. You, yeah, that's value. So you don't need, they don't need leads. Most of them just need help converting the leads that they already have. And so looking at these little cheat sheets will kind of get your creative juices going uh, on the value that you bring. Because again, I think we can all agree if we're giving away $1,000 bills, those are pretty easy calls to make. Pretty Absolutely. easy calls to make. So it's just about scripting uh, and knowing your value um, and understanding that in, I think intrinsically people are just generally nice now is everybody nice no some yeah. people just really suck right it's just it's just the nature of the numbers but as a general rule most by far are nice people like you and me like yeah you know, I, I do think i think you're right i think when we you were surrounded by so much noise sometimes mm -hmm. that we it's easy to look at the negative side of of things and make it make it bigger than it is and i i always say there are far far more good people than bad um it's just a matter of believing that and and taking the risk it's it's always a risk any any relationship any phone call anything that we're doing so um just hey, I got, I got, that fair go. I got a question for you. Yeah. So you know, you know, you know what? Uh, I I think uh, I think a big piece of it is we insert in words. In other words, one person is uncool to me, and maybe two out of a hundred, right? And I start saying things like, "Everybody's hanging up. None of them like me." Uh, so I'll get a small percentage. And use words like everybody and nobody and always and never, which is yes. which is simply not true. So why is it that if we have one person that's not nice on the phone, we go, oh, I'm not going to do that again. Well, somehow we get in our car. And I don't know about you going down the road, I'll hear somebody hit their horn. So in essence, they're saying, go pound sand, right? Right. Well, and we yet, live nope. in Florida. The horn is normal. Here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I've never heard anybody say, you know, I was out driving today and this person hit the horn. I I'm not going to drive anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go back home and I'm going to stay home and I'm going to walk from now on and I'm not going to drive my car. Even though my car gets me there faster, uh, I don't get rained on, I can listen to music. It's Tesla, so it self-drives me. It wasn't even my fault. It was a darn car. You know, it, it, it turned or you know, whatever. That's, so when somebody really hits their good. horn, we don't, we don't stop driving, but if we have right. one person on call on the phone, we somehow stop calling. Why, why is that? That is, that is a really good analogy because I think it's because we know that we have to drive to get to the places. Hey, we have if to ask we, for business if we want to close loans. I know, but I think it's just that mindset shift of, mm -hmm. of thinking that way of mm -hmm. there is no other option. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, oftentimes I do hear people think that there's this silver bullet. I say it all the time and I'm very transparent about it. The silver bullet is you, mm -hmm. it is you, you, and it is the one thing that you already pay for You're that will change Mm. everything. Mm. Um, and, and not only on a professional level, cause we know, we know with what we do, if you are prospecting, just statistics show for our reporting, you are going to increase your volume. Mm. Here's, here's what you're also going to do. You're going to create life-changing relationships mm. on a, on a personal level as well. You know, their friends, their family, their coworkers, their, you know, all the stuff. You're you helping them out. Relation. Yes. So hey, it's and, relational. And, you know, and, we, and, you know, it's like the old Zig Ziglar thing. If you want, you know, you want just help enough other people get what they want. And so just by making these simple phone calls, they're borrowing money from somebody. You just got to get them to borrow it from you. You're not talking them into doing something. You're yeah. just getting them like they're going to go eat somewhere today. You're getting them to come into your restaurant. They're going to get money from somebody. Uh, make it so it's you. And when you do that, you can take your family to Alaska on a on a vacation. And how cool is that? You know, and like you can have anything that you want in a dream life if you just do the activities of offering to help 
real estate agents and, and the consumers. Like it's just that easy. So uh, what do hey, you think? Um, I was going to say, what do you think would be if you were to give three points to someone to say, I have to do this to change my mindset? What do you think some of those would be? I think the change in mindset comes after the calls, not before. I think the problem is where it's like, hey, soon as I soon as I get buffed, then I'll start doing push-ups. Right. Soon okay. as I soon as I uh, soon as my legs get strong, uh, then I'll I'll go out and start walking and running. Soon so you as do it badly, you just get in there and do yeah. it. So, what if somebody said to you, you know? I, I just need to practice. Let me, let me practice a couple of um, weeks before I start making those calls. You would say I, to them. I would say to them. So back in, uh, back in, uh, so back when, um, when we did our first, uh, I hope it's okay to do this, but back when I just got a picture in my head, back when we, when, when you had your first kiss, like, so when we were whatever teenagers or whenever it happened, you know, and we had our first kiss, I don't know about you, but I didn't go practice with my buddies, <laughs> no. right? I didn't go, Hey, Hey, Steve, Hey, Frank, uh, I, I need to practice this. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, right. if you're going to practice, practice on the real thing. Right. Right. And so if I'm going to, if I'm going to practice my phone calls, I'm going to practice it on the real thing. Cause if I'm doing it on the real thing, the worst that'll happen is I don't get a loan that I already didn't have. And the best yeah. that can happen, hey, I might get lucky, and we get this uh, agent starting to refer over to us, and I and I make thirty six grand by making that phone call, right? And so, so That's if I'm going to practice, practice on the real thing. Don't don't practice on your buddy, right? Practice on the real thing. And if somebody was to call, I always say this to to people that are talking about, oh, well, I'll just I'll start making my calls on Monday. Um, and actually, my daughter just told me the other day, she's like, Mom, I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to start that on Monday. And I, I look at them and I say, all good things don't have to start on a Monday. Mm -hmm. So no matter when you hear this podcast, you don't have to wait till Monday. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You just do it. Just do it and do it. Um, you know, I always tell people to get comfortable Maybe it doesn't start at two hours a day and that's okay. Um, start at 30 minutes a day and then, you know, add another 30 minutes and then and we'll get up to that two hours in a couple of weeks. You don't have to go do that in one sitting. There's just so many methods to that. And I, I would be happy to talk to people through that, but hey, I, I got, I got a great idea. Yeah. I think, I think knowing the value and having something to say, I think makes the difference. Uh, those two lists that we have, the 141 reasons why um, real estate agents should refer to my company, I say my company, to you as the loan officer. Right. And the other list, 101 reasons why, or I got it backwards. So 141 okay. reasons why consumers should use us as a mortgage company. And yeah, then, so it's a, yeah, so 141 reasons why the consumer should use my mortgage company, which helps yeah. me make my uh, buyer calls, right? My borrower calls or the 101 reasons why real estate agents, uh, have a reason to refer to me. Again, I would, I recommend like grabbing those lists and just grabbing like one or two or three of those things as your talking points. Uh, if somebody wants to get a copy of those, uh, Krista, I bet, I bet you're getting ready to make their day. Aren't you? Yes. I would love to give them a copy of it. They just reach out to me. Um, you can, uh, book a time to talk with me and I can get these lists over to you by going to www.meetupwithkrista.com. I was so excited to talk to people. I was just saying, Hey, yeah. talk to Krista.com. So meetupwithkrista.com and you're not selling these, you're giving these away. Absolutely. Yes. Right, per perfect. Great list to have, by the way, it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, it'll, um, by the way, you can use these lists for a lot of different things. Number one, to feel confident about making your calls. It'll definitely help if you know what to say. Uh, number two, maybe you do some videos on some of these topics. Uh, yes. So, or or maybe you could do some social media on some of these topics. So I love these little cheat sheets. I think they're great. So, I do cool. too. Yeah. Meet up with Krista.com. And who wouldn't want to do that? that would I look be forward to it. I'm so excited. I love the opportunity to meet with everyone. And I cannot thank you enough, Carl, um, just for your leadership, your mentorship, friendship, and um, mm -hmm. just the opportunity to be with you here today.
Yeah. Well, thanks. It's uh, it's great having you here. You uh, you make me a better me. So I appreciate you. So good stuff, Krista. I, I love doing these podcasts with you. So uh, meet up with Krista.com. Get the cheat sheets. Uh, forward this episode to your friends. Give us those great reviews. So I got a little competition going with one of uh, with a buddy of mine on who can get the most reviews. And like, dang it, I, I was ahead of him for like three years and he wow. just overtook me. And it's like, we're going to come know, back then. What do we got to do? I need, I need to do an ethical bribe or something. So, okay. so, so they go to meetupwithkrista.com and they give us a review and then they, you can have the, uh, you can have the cheat sheets. Absolutely. I love whatever. it. I guess whatever. It, it'll be an honor <laughs> system. Cause we're not going to, what are you going to do? Yeah. Send it over to me. No, just, uh, Jim. Hey, we appreciate the reviews. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, Krista. And we'll see you on the next episode of Loan Officer Freedom. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.